Okay, so you just bought yourself an awesome new Leatherman and you don't want to lose it. In this video, I'm going to give you a few tips on what I do to prevent the loss of my Leathermans, having lost three of them in the past. This is what I do and giving you guys a quick how-to on a really cool uh, kind of modification that you can do to the handles. That are, it's really simple but really helpful. So let's jump into it. Guys, if you're like me, you love Leathermans and you want to do the best by them to take care of them. And frankly, these two in front of you are quite expensive. This one being $120, this one right around $140. So these things are not cheap at all. And so you don't want to lose them. Now, sadly, I lost both my Surge and my Charge Plus. So these are actual replacements. Now, like I said, I just bought these two. So the first thing I would recommend doing if you get a Surge is get one of these little lanyards. Now, luckily, if you buy this, this comes with a pocket clip and a lanyard. And believe it or not, most Leathermans can actually receive lanyards through this little slot here. So what you do is you take this, this notch goes into this locking bit. You take it, you just slide it in here, release the lock so that there's not any tension and it just slides right in there and it's all locked up. So after I put this lanyard extension on there, I just put a small bright orange lanyard on there letting people know or letting myself know if it gets dropped, if it gets lost, it's easier to find. So how do you prevent the loss of this one? Well, it looks a little janky. What I actually did was I put some duct tape on it. Now, you, I would highly encourage high visibility duct tape, but for now, all we have is this military grade duct tape. So that's what I did. And even this military grade duct tape works really well because essentially what you're trying to do is add more traction to the grip. These metal grips and stuff are great and all. These steel grips, aluminum grips are great, but they're really slick and very slippery. And what happened to my first Charge Plus is, like I said, this smooth, slippery surface released and at some point it just fell out of my pocket. So how I prevent that in the future is adding just little track pads of traction, especially underneath the clip, and that helps prevent the loss. So that's how you prevent the loss of a Charge Plus. Now, like I said, the other part of this video that I wanted to get to is how to make really awesome, really nice uh, grip kind of panels, if you will, for any Leatherman out there, whether it's a Surge like this or a Charge like this. Now, this was my first try. It looks like crap, but this is my second try, and it looks just a little bit better. Still a little off but overall pretty good and I'm going to show you guys how you can make something very similar to this on this side. Okay, let's do that. So starting off, you will need some kind of duct tape. This is military grade duct tape and you'll need some kind of scissors. The longer the better because with scissors and duct tape, the longer the scissors the better because you're going to get cleaner cuts. We got the duct tape here, and the size for those wondering, you know, how much you're going to want, this is something that you're going to have to measure before uh, cutting, and it's going to be contingent on each and every multi-tool. As you guys can see, these two multi-tools are drastically different in size. This one's about a half inch bigger. This is going to be dependent on, one, how long you want your uh, kind of scale add-ons to be, and how long your multi-tool is. Like I said, a full-size multi-tool is going to take more duct tape than a smaller multi-tool. So essentially what you want to do at this point is, depending on the type of tool you're using, in this case I'm going to do it for the saw on the surge. I like to take both the scale and the tool out. So this way I can set this down and keep in mind too, when you set this down, you want just a little bit of overhang because the key to keeping this on the tool itself is the fact that it can kind of roll over. So what I like to do is kind of look over here. You'll see the ruler. Make sure that this doesn't fully cover up your ruler because you don't want to lose the functionality of your ruler. You can see here, you can still see your marks. It's covering this a little bit, but I'm actually going to chop that off so that won't be an issue. So you just want it enough so that it's just rolling over here and so that it gets some traction. Now the challenge with the saw implement is as you guys can see back here, 
there's going to be a little notch to cut. So essentially what I do is I basically trace the outline of the handle. And you guys can see with duct tape, it actually goes pretty good. You guys can really see the outline of this handle. And the next thing I'm going to do, quite logically, is cut the duct tape. So I'm going to cut off any of the excess. But keep in mind, too, that just remember that when you're cutting off the excess, you want to leave just a little bit. We cut it up and do keep in mind if you leave your ends the very ends you cut a little bit janky that's okay because the key to this is going in here and folding all that back and this is another reason why i like to use long scissors for this because you're going to have to basically take the end of your scissor the non-edge part of it and just basically go along that crease and crease it all in that's how you make it look nice and presentable like that now the next thing you'll want to do is close your tool and check and i can still come in here as you guys can see and get the nail nick on the saw and i can still get this nail nick on the saw so we still have that completely functional so now it's time to do the next side and like i said the same thing applies however with these knives uh, with leatherman they create a little spot here so that if you open your tool up first you can't open the knife that's a safety feature so you have to open up the knife first and then open up the actual handle but same principle applies. We're going to take the same piece of tape that we cut off earlier. Now, I like to use this little end piece right here, or this kind of break in material as my end piece, just to give me something even and flat to go off of. And then we're just gonna lay the piece of tape down and do the same exact thing. There we go. So that is a very simple, very easy and effective way to make a really nice um, kind of handle scales for your any of your Leathermans. So anyways, guys, that is all for now. God bless, and I'm out.